Along with the Hutians, another group inhabiting the region was a tribe of Indo-European speakers who probably arrived in Anatolia during the third millennium BC. In the 17th century BC, this group conquered the Hutians, took their name and assimilated their culture. These were the Hittites. The Hittites belonged to one of the tribes of the Indo-European stock. When, from where and from which direction they immigrated into Anatolia are the still unsolved questions of Hittitology. The Hattians were living in Anatolia when the Hittites arrived there to settle. The Hittites called their land the land of Hatti after the Hattians, and in fact Hittite itself derives from the name for this people. The early years of the Hittite kingdom are shrouded by myth and legend. It's believed that around 1650 BC, the Hittite ruler managed to join all the disparate local people under his rule, establishing the Hittite kingdom. He then moved the capital of his new kingdom to Hattusha and took the name Hattusheli, meaning man from Hattusha. Surrounded by the hostile Azawa tribes in the west and the formidable Hurrian and Mesopotamian states in the southeast, Hattusheli knew that he had to assert himself in the region. He immediately went on the attack. In a short time, the Hittites conquered lands in eastern Anatolia and northern Syria. Any state that surrendered without a fight was spared plunder and devastation. But any kind of resistance attracted the full fury of the Hittite army. Hattusheli was a shrewd politician who knew that military success had to be backed by strong propaganda. As his conquests grew, he nurtured a superhuman image of himself. His frame is new, his breast is new, his penis is new, his head is of tin, his teeth are those of a lion, his eyes are those of an eagle, and he sees like an eagle. Hattusili I was a master of self-promotion. Uh, the texts that date to his reign uh, testify to this side of his character. He was a self-proclaimed lion, and he did everything he could to try and live up to this epithet, both in his military conquests and in his uh, handling of the tumultuous internal politics of the kingdom. Under Hattusheli's enigmatic, often ruthless rule, the young kingdom expanded. His military successes were forever embedded in Hittite folklore and annals. Hattusili I really gave birth to intellectual life in Hatti. Besides the historical texts that date to his reign, many of the early literary texts also belong in that period, as do the earliest uh, versions of the Hittite laws. Although writing in Hittite probably goes back to the period of the old Assyrian colonies, Hattusili introduced it to the new capital at Hattusha and really raised it to a level to compete with uh, Mesopotamia and Egypt. Hattusheli spent most of his reign on military campaign. Once he secured the kingdom's borders, he set his sights beyond the Taurus Mountains towards the enticing resources and ports of Syria. Against the approaching Hittite army, the Syrian states formed a coalition under the city-state of Aleppo, the most powerful in northern Syria. Hattusheli quickly conquered and plundered most of the North Syrian cities and then attacked Aleppo. But two campaigns failed. Eventually, he abandoned all objectives in Syria and returned home. Hattusheli's last campaign as a ruler had resulted in defeat. 
Around 1620 BC, Hattusili was ailing. On his deathbed, the aging monarch proclaimed his grandson, still only a child, as his legitimate successor. Hattusili's last words were engraved on the same tablet that Bedrick Rosny would use to decipher the Hittite language three and a half thousand years later. Laziamo Ari. Takaniatamo Sapa and the Harak. Nomo Takaniatamo Taknats. <laughs> 